Hello, you are here with Anne, which is making a documentary on, indie, on the indie scene in Japan. And the documentary is named Branching, Branching Paths. And it's a quite interesting project. It's a project that I didn't expect to see that this early. But first of all, uh, let's ask the obvious question. Why? Uh, so basically there is um, a quite long beginning for this project. Uh, I came to live in Japan in 2011. Before this I was working in a French TV channel which is called No Life, which is about geek and otaku culture. So I made many TV programs about games, game reviews and uh, interviews of games creator as well. And uh, I came to live in Japan a few years ago. And then uh, it was in 2013, uh, there were two events which kind of led to the, to the development of this documentary. The first one is, uh, because those two events were really on the same time, the first one I met a game developer which is called, uh, who is called uh, Kimura Yoshiro, and he worked before on uh, RPG like Moon on players. PlayStation 1 and so on, and he was also producer uh, for Grasshopper Manufactory on the Murray Rose and so on. And he asked me, uh, okay, I left the company uh, last year and I decided, I decided to, to become indie, to make my own game, and uh, I need your help to spread the word in France or um, foreign countries or whatever. Do you want to make with me a video blog about, uh, a, dev, a dev blog of how we are developing the game and so on? And we tried and then it he said, yeah, he doesn't want it to, to show the, the game, at, to show the code of the game and so on, because he was afraid. And so we decided to, to make a small interviews. It was uh, to make like a 15-minute 15 pro 15 program where I was filming and he was going to interview people from the indie scene in Japan. It could be foreigners or Japanese people. So actually we made two episodes of this, but it, it, hasn't, been uh, it hasn't been released anywhere. So... Uh, we tried to find some medias who were uh, interested in it too, because I cannot do it for free since it was taking some time and especially translating everything. And uh, so it was slipping somewhere. And on the same time, I was invited with uh, another French writer, which is called Florent Gorge. Uh, he's making a lot of books about Nintendo history and so on. And we were invited to SEDEC, which is the Japanese GDC. Uh, we were invited by a game creator, very famous game creator in Japan, which is called uh, Endo Masanobu. This is the guy who made uh, Xevious Tower of Draga and so on. And he asked us, he asked us that's uh, game industry, now they are a little bit depressed because they cannot speak English that well, but when they go on foreign site, they only saw statements like Japanese games are dead from, it could be Phil Fish, Inafune and so on, and only people are flaming, trolling on the forum site and so on. So he said, I know that in France, uh, French people, they love Japanese culture, games, otaku culture and so on. Can, will, can you make something to make them feel good and to explain how it is because they're really depressed? So uh, we made a survey uh, on French gamer, and we were super surprised because we said, oh, if we have like 1,000 people answering, it will be really cool. And actually, in one month, we have 6,400 people. And it was, we had, it was a very, very long survey about what do you think about Japanese content, Japanese game, and so on. So we did this conference in SEDEC, and it was really, really well received. It was so much people in the end saying, you know, we don't know that foreign countries are thinking of this about our game and so on. It was quite of crazy. So one interesting point is that in the survey, uh, there was many questions and some uh, of them is uh, for you, what is Japanese game? And uh, what do you expect from Japanese game now? And uh, it was quite outstanding because uh, one of the uh, one of the answers is we want a free free spirit and crazy game like Katamari Damashi. And some people, it, it was kind of the same. We want that indie spirit, that independent spirit, which was in a Japanese game until 10 years ago. So it's quite interesting because it was uh, in the room, only people from Square Enix and all the big game industry. And when you ask people what they are looking for Japanese games, they're looking for new experiences and some crazy stuff and so on. And so finally, this is, uh, I quite, it 
it sounds like indie, like indie games and so on, making the stuff you want and so on, without being uh, having your company say, oh, please make me the 17 uh, stuff for that game. So for totally another project, I want you a company video, which, which was called Assemblage, to work with them or something else. And I just saw them on my computer. Oh, by the way, I have made this. What do you think about it? It was a prototype. And also speak uh, to them about the, G, the CDEC. And they said, oh, I was like, we, we, could make, we could make something nice about this. And so we together, we saw that, oh, perhaps we can do a documentary. So yeah, that's why it started. So basically, it's uh, self-funded. Uh, totally free of anything documentary. That's, very nice. That's a very nice idea. I mean, you don't see many many much much uh, material about this kind of thing, which is actually kind of interesting because the indie scene in Japan was big before before being in the indie was cool. All the dojinshi games, all the uh, the visual novels that, that were all started as indie, and for at the moment even like uh, there is like this big resurgence of indie games. Like there are a few a few big developers of the past that have become indie, like uh, like Iga or uh, or uh, Yu Suzuki. So it's getting bigger and bigger. So uh, what the, what kind of indie developers are you going to focus on? Like these very small one-man studios, or maybe even the bigger ones like Yu Suzuki San or uh, Igarashi San or everyone. Is it, is that going to be like a different si sides of the documentary between the big one and the small ones, or going to be too all like a putpourri of uh, of indie developers? About the people that we are following in the documentary. Uh At first, there is really tons of people, <laughs> too much, and uh, much more than in the teaser. So, uh, for sure, if uh, since we will be speaking about the state of the indie game scene during those two years, because the shooting we start in, uh, we started in Tokyo Game Show 2013 until now. To explain to you, because it's not only for Japanese people, this documentary is also for foreign people. To explain what the situation of Japanese indie now we have to explain about Dojin game as well. So basically we will it will be mainly focused on indie but we will have uh, a part about Dojin so we have interview from uh, Zun, uh, the creator of Toho project and uh, other people I can't say the name for the moment but other big people and uh, so about the indie developer themselves, uh, we have really a wide range of profiles. It could be like uh, veterans who quit, like Kimura-san or Inafune or Iga. Uh, for Yu Suzuki, it's a little bit difficult because we had the news uh, about Shenmue while we were almost sh closing the shootings, but it's strange. We don't... Is it really indie or not? It's quite... It's, kind of, it's in the middle. It's in the middle. So, yeah, that's, that's quite uh, strange. Like... Uh, And also we have uh, like veterans who are not famous, but people who work for, I don't know, Triace, a programmer or stuff like this, and became indie as well, but they are not famous in, uh, in foreign countries. Uh, you can put their name and nobody will notice it. Also we have like students, we have people who just started to like uh, Mopin, which is in the trailer, uh, the guy. He never made any game before. He started to make a game, and then uh, one month, which is called Dunwell, one month after, a few months after, he showed it in a meetup event, and uh, everybody was, oh my, oh my God, like, like this. And the guy, I don't know why, we don't know how, but uh, people from Devolver Digital contacted him on Twitter and say, oh, can you send us a bill of your game? And so he signed with Devolver Digital. That's kind of crazy. This guy, this is, he is 21 years old. He, this is his first game and so on. So. That's a great thing of being indie, right? Yeah. So, and also there is like people uh, having like in their 30s, 40s, making, they are not from game industry, but they want to make something like a game. Or, yeah, we have also people still work, working somehow in game industry. Uh, but uh, they are making the game on their free time and so on. So that's very difficult because basically, as it is something we will also explain, but uh, still you have big companies in Japan, but in fact, they are uh, giving the job to smaller companies. Uh, I don't remember the word in English, sorry. 
but uh, subcontract. Yeah. There is really, really, really tons of subcontract companies. So there are people from subcontract company which are making games on their free time, for example. So the indie scene in Japan is pretty peculiar because it's very fragmented. Like there is a ton of them and they are all over the place. So has it been difficult to hunt them down and to find them? Yeah, uh, to be really uh, like it's quite vague, but uh, you have three, three types of indie scene in Japan. You have the dojin scene, and then you have the scene in Tokyo, Tokyo or around Tokyo, and then you have the scene in Kyoto, which, which is led by Q Games with uh, Dylan Kersbert, which is making games for Sony and Nintendo, and Vitae, which is a company which is subcontracting for Nintendo, but they had a, a special department uh, for making just the stuff they want to do, like indie stuff. So, yeah, we will. We, it's also one of the big themes of the documentaries that there is events, but the, the, the scene is very... It's not like uh, having the Indie Mega Booth or something, like people can gather and so on. There is some meetups in Tokyo or in Kyoto, but since in Japan, like houses and so on, everything is small, you cannot like uh, having a big house and invite all your friends to make uh, like a weekend about indie game and so on. It's just like you are in a small room like this. And yeah. That's also one problem. So, uh, at what stage the filming and the the cut the cut up, the cutting of the documentary is at the moment? Is it like the filming is all done? Are you all ready? Yeah, about the filming of the documentary for everything which is events and interview, we are done at ninety percent, and we are actually uh, beginning to edit because it's uh, the stuff we some interviews we still have to do. It was. Uh, people we need to catch up it's a follow up stuff or people we know where we will put them it's just that to get with everybody's schedule was quite difficult and it's also difficult as a foreigner yes. to get the confidence of uh, Japanese people and <laughs> even in, um, I'm into all the events for we are in all the events for two years and all the meetups and so on it's still difficult to, to get in touch with some people <laughs> so, uh, what is your main goal with this documentary? What's, what do you want to communicate to the world? So, the main goal with this documentary is uh, primarily it will be it's made uh, for foreign people as well, but also for Japanese people. So, the fr on the first hand, it's just just that because even Japanese people they don't know about the Japanese indie scene. It's really something new. So it's to make uh, the indie scene recognized into Japan, into Japan and into the world as well. And if it could help the developers to have some coverage, marketing, or I don't know why. And also it could be interesting to, say that, to see if Western people, which are tired of, I don't know, having like eight or nine episodes from kind of Kingdom Hearts or something like this, and uh, probably... Uh, or Final Fantasy and so on, but it's been like five years since there is a new one. Yeah, yeah, that's but, but uh, like very very long series, and people who want to see something new uh, to to see that actually there is something, but uh, it's just becoming to go out since uh, in Japan they have a very big problem about distributing uh, distributing the games uh, in foreign in uh, foreign markets. So also in those two years, we have some platforms who became quite big, uh, like Playism. Or now we have Dejika, which start started this year to handle uh, a lot of PC games on Steam and so on. So uh, just to so show that the gear has been turned on and probably this thing will go bigger and bigger. Uh, there has been quite a bit lately. There has been quite a bit of support from big publishers for to indie developers. Like for instance, Sony has been very supportive to, towards indie. Have you ever thought like to, to seek the support of these kind of companies as an indie documentary? Maybe putting them on their platforms, like putting the documentary like on PSN or something like that. Yeah, Sony is one of the biggest actors about indie game, uh, even in Japan, and about the distribution of the documentary. 
uh, we, it's really strange the way we made it because usually you, when you make a documentary, you are looking for a budget, you write a scenario or something, and we're a little bit stupid. And you say, "Hey, make a documentary," but no, we plan absolutely nothing on. And so we, it's basically it's made with when on the company free time when the cameraman and the cameras are available. It's like on, free, on the open, screed, open screed schedule. Yeah, it's an indie project as well. So since we have old jobs uh, behind and so on. Uh, so it, we could have asked uh, Sony for this, but also me, I have not that much experience, uh, f stuff to show them. I cannot say I made this documentary. I made TV shows and so on, but not big documentary like this. But also, for, uh, making a contract with a company, probably uh, into the process of making the documentary, we will say, ah, oh, we have to show that company, or we have to put them a little bit more. So having everything totally cut from uh, contractors, it was also a way to be totally free of saying what we want to say. If you want to say, we don't think that uh, those guys are making something really, I don't know, interesting or something something like this, we can cut it, it's our freedom. That's a, that's a, that's a good stance. Uh, so, you say that uh, finding the, the, de the developers and also gaining their trust is a difficult thing, and, and I, I know very well about that. Because actually managing to, to interview uh, any kind of Japanese developers is really, really difficult for a Western journalist. So, um, can, do you have any anecdotes, anything funny to, to, or interesting to tell our readers about like how you found someone and managed to like get in contact with them and gain their trust? So basically to find people, first it was some people I knew like Kimura-san and so on, then it was going to indie meetups like uh, Pikotachi and uh, Tokyo Indies and so on. So when you go there every month, you you start to know people and also something I want to add that in the documentary there is not only Japanese developers there is also foreign developers living here so everybody is interacting and for example you interview a guy and say oh my friend is really making some great stuff please uh, just uh, just go over him and it's really going naturally like this and also when you go to an event you see who is always here and all who are the people who are making quite different stuff and some that's why you found them. Sometimes uh, you heard about some games which is pro which might be selling on PS4 and so on, but the guys, there is no way to contact him, so you just send him a message on Twitter or something like this. Or if you know the publisher, if there is some publisher like Playism, I just ask Playism, I, would, I want you to have a, do you have the contact from but Sometimes there is people who ask me in the beginning, oh yeah, I want to be in the documentary, but then, oh sorry, I don't have the time, and yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. But for episodes, like, there is many people who are very shy, and also, they are a little bit reluctant to be filmed at home. Oh, yeah. That's uh, the stuff, because usually, yeah, they are working from home, for many, most of them, so that's it, and also, uh, when you interview people who are working in uh, companies, because we have not only developers, we are also people from platform, people from middleware, but who have connection with the, in, what is going on on indie or journalists as well, and they just put you in the meeting room, and because you cannot do the interview in another place, so document if our documentary is not very visual, visual, but yeah, Those this is. Uh, yeah, we we have we have to do it. So, but yeah, that's interesting. For example, the um, I don't say the name, but there is uh, one guy which is making a game which is quite selling uh, well, even in Western countries, and he say, okay, I'm a hikikomori, you know, the the people who cannot go about the surf. But I know I have to make efforts to sell my game, so okay, you can come to film me. Oh, that's, that's, that's a big one. That's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. One. But there is really people panicking in front of the camera and so on. So it's not like having uh, like people from PR uh, speaking about, oh yeah, this is the game we developed and so on, really, really, really speaking a lot. It's like people who even cannot say the name and so on. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. 
That's actually quite interesting. Like the indie developers are <laughs> so varied. There is so much of a variety uh, between different in, between different developers, and even going to hunt them at home must be <laughs> quite challenging. Uh, you're a lady. Uh, did you find many like female indie developers in Japan? And did you film them? Was it difficult to find them, or was it easy? Is there any of them? So this is uh, something I was, I'm a little bit, uh, I wanted to have more, but there is not that much female indie developers. Uh, they're probably more into Dojin, but usually they are making graphics or visual novel, but it's really difficult to see them actually. There is some, we have some, but very few, but it's really difficult to to find some really i ask some friends we are uh, which are uh, in the or developers do you know female developers and say no i don't know anyone <laughs> I wish uh, were. for example i know in that team there there is a girl making the graphics but that's all i don't know so i know that uh, some type in, uh, uh, sorry, I'm speaking. Uh, I'm thinking in Japanese in my head, but uh, especially in, in Western countries, because I already had one reaction about this. That oh, there is too few girls in the trailer. Of course. I, I would like to have more, but it's not your fault. Uh, it's not my there. fault. It's just like the um, the the situation in Japan. It's not easy to make a uh, game when you are a girl and just when you are in a company, you know, about like having children and so on, keeping on your job. It's quite difficult here still. So yeah, that's. I will have more. We have some, but uh, yeah. Do you think the situation is changing, improving a little bit, or uh, still kind of mm. dead for now? The situation. It's. I don't know because uh, how there is some girls in game industry, but not that much in indie. Mm -hmm. And the problem is probably also the game industry. It's very hard about working hours and so on. And so there is people, not only girls, but there is also guys who quit because they cannot. Their their body cannot stand it. It's too hard. Oh, yeah. So. I don't know, perhaps if there is some a girl succeeding making uh, a game which will be, uh, I don't know, in a foreign press or selling selling itself or not not only selling but having a good press or something like this, perhaps things w will change but I really, uh, it's really difficult, it's really, really difficult. I'm sure it is. <laughs> so, uh, when, when can we see the documentary and where can we see it? So, about the release, so basically we are supposed to release in uh, January. So, yeah, you have beginning of January, ending of January, but mm, yeah, January. And for the platform, we are uh, currently looking for a platform, so we want to make, uh, to be able to release it on as many platforms we could, so probably it will be downloading platform, it could be a platform uh, not only on PC but other one. Uh, if you have, if we have opportunity to show it into events uh, like, I don't know, gaming events or like otaku stuff events, for sure we will be really happy to show it. So this is something we are working on actually. But the team is really, really small. The, we are like three, three people, so oh, three people, <laughs> sometimes we had some cameraman in the beginning, we had some just cameraman from the company, which, oh, this cameraman is, is available today, make it, but now we are, the, the, the main team is like me, the director, but I'm also making uh, the PR myself, and uh, there is uh, the editor, which is also cameraman for the second half of the documentary, and then we have a line, uh, ex executive producer, but after there is some people just helping sometimes, but yeah, the, the it's really, really a small team. I'm guessing it's going to be on YouTube as well, right? Uh, we don't know if it might be on YouTube since uh, if we can have a little bit of money, it could be nice oh, yeah. as well. If we can put it on, if we can put it on many platforms and put it somewhere for free, it will be cool. But since it's a two year something we made for two years, we still uh, have to. It doesn't. It didn't cost that much, but since we didn't make any Kickstarter or anything else, we still have to 
to just to, to put something in a company hall, I guess. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, well, thank you very much and uh, good luck for the documentary. I'm sure that really I'm actually very curious to see it myself. Thank you very much. Thank you.